What should the compressive strength of lifting materials be? That is a really great question. And we're gonna break this whole topic down for you in easy to understand ways that you can actually fact check or verify for yourself. You know, and we, we understand um, you may be approached by someone that's you know claiming a 2000 to 2500 PSI compressive strength mud jacking material and it, you know, it sounds great. But why wouldn't that sound great? You're very likely someone who doesn't think in terms of compressive strengths of things. You're not familiar with it. Um, you're not, you don't have a point of reference. It's, it's, it's hard for most people to really have a good perspective on what all of this means. So if someone tries to sell you something with a high compressive strength, it's easy to think, oh, that sounds great. I'm going to go with you. But we need to break this down a little bit. And by the way, compressive strength isn't the only important factor here. Material spread and water resistancy are equally important. So what does a compressive strength need to be? Why shouldn't it be 5,000 PSI? Why not 10,000 PSI? Why, why shouldn't it be something that's rated to lift and support tollway slabs, highway slabs? That has to be really great stuff, right? Well, to put all of this into perspective, let's take, for example, a driveway slab with a, with a truck sitting on it. What would all that weigh, and what would the compressive strength need to be to properly support it? Let's break that down. A driveway slab, let's assume it's eight feet wide, and 20 feet long, that's gonna weigh about 8,000 pounds. A pickup truck sitting on it, a truck weighs probably about 7,000 pounds. That means this eight by 20 slab now has a total weight of about 15,000 pounds. But compressive strengths are typically expressed in terms of pounds per square inch. So we need to convert this load, this driveway and truck into square inches. And an eight by 20 slab is comprised of about 23,000 square inches. Yeah, lots of them little guys there. If you divide the 15,000 pounds by the 23,000 square inches, you end up with a total square inch load of less than one PSI. Yeah, so I mean that right there just really puts it into perspective what a compressive strength would need to be. Now, let's go back to the example of Illinois Tollway. Illinois Tollway and Departments of Transportation, they regularly have to lift and support highway slabs. Well, those are super heavy, they're super big, and they've got 24-7 traffic on them all the time. That has to be really great stuff to be able to effectively lift and support highways. Well, the Illinois Tollway, their primary preferred material for lifting those slabs is polyurethane. That's right. They've moved away from any type of mud jacking technology and they require polyurethane. So when they have these highways raised, they spec it out that it has to be raised with polyurethane and they also specify the compressive strength that it has to be. Guess what that number is? 90 PSI, you know? And it's true for the, the uh, right here in Chicagoland, I-294, 42 mile section, had areas that dropped up to five inches. They put a bid spec out for that work and they said it had to be polyurethane and that polyurethane foam needed to have a compressive strength of 90 PSI. So let's go back to our driveway example. If we have an eight foot wide by 20 foot long piece of driveway and we support it with our polyurethane that has a 90 PSI compressive strength, that all works out to being able to support theoretically a load of over two million pounds. That is over 100 times the strength that it needs to be to support any reasonable practical load that that driveway is 
ever going to experience. So, you know, if someone is trying to sell you on these 2,000 to 2,500 PSI compressive strengths, you, you need to understand that is a that is a marketing tactic. It is, it, it's just a sales strategy to try to sell you. Um, and in fact, you know, we raise a lot of concrete that has been mud jacked. And when we do that, we oftentimes sample the mud jacking materials that are beneath that concrete. And without exception, those materials will just simply crumble in your hand. We have never found a mud jacking material that had any binding agent to it really at all. Um, and we've even taken samples of those mud jacking materials back to our shop and we've put them in side-by-side -side erosion tests against our polyurethane and without exception the mud jacking materials break down and wash away. So you know mud jacking it can be referred to as you know concrete like, cement like, clay sand mixture. Some guys are creative and even refer to it as custom mortar mixtures. It doesn't matter what they call it. In our experience it's all the same it crumbles in your hand and it washes away and compressive strengths if something crumbles in your hand there's no way in our opinion that it has a compressive strength anywhere near suitable for providing a long-term repair so we would never use mud jacking materials or technology we would only provide polyurethane as a repair method for sunken concrete or for stabilizing it for that matter we hope you found this interesting.